Reciban un saludo y una cordial bienvenida. Welcome everyone to this session about inclusive companies that we're celebrating in the framework of the Zero Project. In this occasion, this year, we're going to talk about employment for people with disabilities. I am glad to be here with you as a moderator of this session, and I want to thank Zero Project and Foundation the School with me for giving me this opportunity. I am Ayana Moidano, and I am a General Secretariat of the OISS which is an international organization formed by 150 organizations in all Iberoamerica. So all of the countries from Latin America, the Caribbean and the Caribbean that speak Spanish or Portuguese besides Spain, Portugal and Andorra. This organization has been around from 1954 and we work on social protection and social security in all the region and in all the countries of the region. I am a, a lawyer by trainer and I am a specialist in policies in terms of equal opportunities for women and men. And I also work in managing um, organizations of social well-being. Before being a general secretary, I work in the same organization as a director of programs, amongst which I manage programs for people with disabilities and also for the elderly and uh, gender equality. The OISS has been around and working on the promotion of work for people with disabilities for a long time. This is something that we address because employment is the main access point for social security in, currently in the uh, Ibero-American countries. So if a person wants to access to a pension, an elderly pension, or they want to go to uh, have medical treatment or social benefits um, they need to have um, a formal employment and they need to be paying a social security as well. We know that many people with disabilities in the American countries in uh, many zones where we'll be uh, talking about mainly a 70% of the people with disabilities, they do not have an employment of this kind, so they cannot access to this type of uh, protection. That is why the OISS addresses the topic of uh, employment for the people with disabilities in a very important way. We started with a line of work and with a promotion of employment uh, from the uh, public institutions. So we started working with the governments from the region uh, in the Ibero-American countries. This is um, a line of work that is centered in the exchange of practices, of best practices in the employment of people with disabilities. And this could be the reserve of public employment with for people with disabilities the system of quotas that exist in many places of the region and other measures such as uh, tax incentives, um, grants, and the quotas of social security um, for the hiring of people with disabilities, etc. However, uh, early enough, we saw that this just wasn't enough, that we needed to address the topic in a more comprehensive way. And we saw that it was very evident that we needed to involve the private sector as well, the companies, because those are the ones that generated the most employment in the, in the region. And the truth is that there is more and more, more interest from the companies in the region and in general, in the global aspect, you know, globally, there is a growing interest for including people with disabilities in their staff. There is growing interest to achieve work teams that are more diverse, teams that really reflect diversity of the society where we live and that they see this diversity as an asset, as a richness for the companies. And even more than that, this inclusive companies in the region and also re, uh, globally, we have been seeing how they are grouped in national platforms in such a way that they generate an additional value to the work that those companies make individually. This national networks and this uh, inclusive companies that we're going to be talking about today have a fundamental value for the employment of people with disabilities. And I say this because they are this space that companies need to exchange experiences amongst them. So company to company, peer to peer. I'm talking about the economic point of view, not with the language that we had been using up to now, this uh, view of charity, this view of companies having to do things because they need to do uh, social, uh, social well-being or social uh, benefits. So we're talking about 
economy here? Uh, why, why is it profitable for companies to hire people with disabilities? So it's a totally different way to address it, always from the human rights point of view, but this is more related to the profit for the companies. So this work that we're doing with the companies is also good for them to have a better dialogue, a more fluent dialogue with the organization of, the organizations of people with disabilities. Many times it's difficult to establish these relationships with them and this collaboration, a more stable collaboration with them. And also with uh, public institutions uh, are difficult, uh, unions and other organizations as well. The creation of this organizations is not easy at all because we need to be absolutely dedicated to that. We need funds. We need a secretariat that is going to be in charge of those technical aspects as well. So that is why the models of networks and platforms are very diverse. We have network platforms that are promoted by the organizations um, nationally, and there are other ones that are boosted by nonprofit organizations. So uh, foundations, for example, this is going to be uh, talked about uh, in this session. And there's a uh, big diversity, but there are minimum requirements that these platforms need to comply with so that they can be recognized as such. This minimum criteria were, were gathered by the ILO, as we're going to see later on. Uh, but the way of organizing once we comply with this criteria, these requirements is very, very uh, diverse. And the activities are also diverse in the different platforms of the companies. This could be, for example, the activities to raise awareness and other organizations for them to hire people with disabilities, or it could be the work that they do for technical assistance so that the hiring of people with disabilities is actually successful. Because this process of hiring other people, this process of inclusion requires certain knowledge we also have some studies, some research. We also do some training for the people that are in charge of the human resource, uh, resource departments of the companies, for example. So we do a lot of different types of, of uh, jobs. We're going to hear the national networks today that are going to be with us. Um, from the organization, from the, I, uh, the OISS, we wanted to go one step further since we had the national networks of inclusive companies in many countries of the region in Iber America, and also we had a global network um, led by the, the ILO, which is something that uh, we're going to talk about. And also with the support of the Spanish government, we boosted an intermediate level creation. So this is the national, the Iber American uh, network of companies, of inclusive companies. So we group all of these companies in one place, but also the companies that work regionally in Latin America and in Iber America. So I'm sure that Fernando Estrada is going to talk about that. He's the president of the uh, of this network, and he's going to address that topic. He's going to give you all of the details about, uh, uh, about that, and he's going to tell you how they're going to intervene in the session. So this work that the OISS does in boosting the Latin American network of inclusive companies is also completed with a celebration of different activities, such as the Iberoamerica Incluye Forum that is carried out every week, every year, and it groups companies, inclusive companies in the region, and also international companies. All of the sector, the nonprofit sector as well, the civil society, there are many organizations that participate here that promote the employment of people with disabilities and also the organizations of people with disabilities. So uh, we have uh, organizations of people, uh, unions, etc. It's a forum to exchange best practices and experiences, and we carry it out every year to promote the employment of people with disabilities in the region. Apart from this, we also organized um, organized training sessions for people from public uh, organizations and also private private for inclusion of people with disabilities. So that's the work that we do at the OISS in the inclusive companies. And once uh, we uh, have this presentation of the work that we do and the session itself, I want to invite you to listen to the five speakers that are going to be here with us today. First of all, I have the pleasure to uh, leave you with Fernando Carota. He is the executive director of the uh, National Network of uh, Inclusive 
projects uh, and uh, companies in Uruguay. He has an economy diploma from the Conrad Adenauer and the Study Center for the for Development from 2010. Fernando has been a director of Crear Comunicación for Argentina, Chile, Paraguay, and Uruguay, where he is responsible for all of the new processes of expansion in the agency. He's also a co-founder of the Uruguayan uh, Foundation of People Management from 2014. So uh, the floor is yours, Fernando. Go ahead. Thank you so much, Anna, for your warm welcome, that nice introduction. Greetings to everyone who is following us from the capital of the capital of Uruguay from in this network of inclusive companies. It is a pleasure to share once again with the companies and institutions throughout the region. And thanks to Zero Project and Fundación Descubreme for the invitation to participate in such a significant event for this Red de Empresas Inclusivas and the entire community. Basically, in this presentation, we've chosen some of the sites that have been a part of the inclusive network of companies of Uruguay, which started in May last year. This is that we have spent four months of this network, which characterizes for gathering a group of public and private and institutions and others in the inclusion of people with disabilities in labor. Now, I'm sharing the companies that we started with, the founding companies and the associations and foundations that have joined us as well in this initiative. As you can see, little by little, this starts shaping and growing in our country. We have the members of the Honorary Counseling Committee or advisory committee represented by international and national companies in a format that we understood was very valuable to listen from their inputs, to listen to their inputs, shaping this mix of people to gather and support with value from the expertise and perspective of each one from the different organizations that they are a part of. So in that way, with those organizations and with that honorary advisory committees that we started a little after the beginning, the launch in June, we had to conduct a virtual event because of the pandemic. And this was a Congress of Disabilities and Companies on the Road to Inclusion, which was very significant to us and also the starting point and I, I will invite you to see the following images. Thank you so much. Hopefully we don't lose touch, we don't lose contact with you because I think this is very, very avant-garde, very the, uh, an activity on the forefront of what is happening around the world. It is very important for us to provide our vision and accompany everyone in this important initiative from the network of inclusive companies. And let me congratulate everyone for this engagement and the large goals and objectives that have been set that you're all proposing. The success of this uh, conference of companies and disability sets the path for success. Uh, we have, we're now in the radar of including people with disabilities in the labor industry. Congratulations for this initiative. It's, it is a very interesting one. I've seen very good speakers and topics. Thank you so much for the invitation to this first conference on companies and disabilities. I think we are now putting in our agenda one of the most important events of the year. And of course, the main goal, which is the effective inclusion of people with disabilities in the labor market. It is indeed a project of the network of inclusive companies to work for a more inclusive Uruguay. It is an unprecedented milestone in our country. We created an agenda of a two-day conference with world-renowned speakers. Uh, Chile, Argentina, Mexico, Paraguay, Suiza, Uruguay, and other countries have participated. We saw a summary of what that two-day conference was, and 
after June, we presented the first virtual fair of employment for people with disabilities, a 100% accessible tool for the first, second, and third days of December this year in parallel in Uruguay through the Red of Empresas Inclusivas and Fundación Discar in Argentina. The main goal of this expo inclusion that we created was to create an Argentina and a Uruguay that are more inclusive. This is an 100% accessible platform to promote the labor inclusion of people with disabilities. This is huge for us because the main pillar of Expo Inclusion is the work and training for people with disabilities. Today, we have presented an initiative that undoubtedly sets a starting point for the inclusion of people with disabilities in the labor market announced in December last year uh, publicly, when at the time was something emerging, just an idea, and not even the network of inclusive companies was formalized. And this, of course, makes us very proud kicking off inclusion and working towards the development of this platform, we believe it's crucial to focus on employability of people with disabilities. It is a pleasure that you're all here today and that we can launch together this powerful experience at Expo Inclusion. I'm very excited and surprised by the deployment of initiatives the you are all presenting and of course seeing an initiatives addressing both of these countries in South America. Thank you so much for inviting inviting me to all of these activities. Expo Inclusion or Expo Inclusion will be a magnificent event, a magnificent encounter, and unquestionably you will find among all of the stakeholders proposals and solutions that will allow us to create opportunities of labor inclusion for people with disabilities in our country and in our region. I'd like to thank for the invitation and celebrate this instances because for us are of tremendous importance and it is important for us internationally to promote the social inclusion of Iber Iber-American countries in this initiative. Well, you saw the presentation of Expo Inclusion. We opened a community of inclusive practices as well, and a space that we share and invite all of the companies in the country to solve the specific problems and situations that are presented throughout the implementation and the cultural process that they must conduct in relation to inclusion of persons with disabilities. We are also conducting the barometer of inclusion a tool that will measure from public institutions, private institutions and educational ones, the inclusion of people with disabilities that hopefully year after year we can share that meter and know how much we've progressed and how we're addressing and extending our scope for inclusive for in, including these people. This is a program of company development that involves the three sectors and in the next 13 months, 36 months, we'll be in charge of working with the highest number of companies possible for the effective inclusion degree development and inclusion of people with disabilities in the work industry, in the work world. So. You see uh, several of the activities. Maria Jimena Rivas, ex the former national director of SENA in Chile in alliance with the Association of People in Uruguay. And here we have the Uruguay Valora Seal presented for second consecutive year. And where we'll be sharing again with the companies about the best practices. And now I invite you to see this video. We're today thankful that the association delivers this seal, awards this seal that is very valued for everyone in order to generate that bond uh, among the different organizations towards people with disabilities that have so many difficulties today to access the labor market. Es un gusto.
gusto que se vea este conocimiento que trata de It's a pleasure to share this knowledge about good practices towards slavery inclusion of people with disabilities. Más que agradecidos de haber podido compartir. We're more than thankful for having shared with you all of the milestones of the inclusive company network. And we thank you for the invitation to participate in this activity. And we understand that we are closer every day to achieve the sustainable, sustainable development goals towards inclusion designing strategies and also planning and developing these strategies and working jointly with the colleagues throughout the region and throughout the world, along with the best organizations in this commitment. And we believe that from the Inclusive Companies Network, we are putting Uruguay in the agenda, in which means the rights to employment of people with disabilities. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fernando, for that interesting presentation. Up next, we'll give the floor to Ms. Carolina Jensen, Executive Coordinator of the Network of Inclusive Companies within SOFOFA, the Network of Development and Promotion in Chile. She's coordinated programs of social companies' responsibility. So whenever you want, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Anna, for that introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Carolina Jensen. I am the executive director of uh, RAIN, the network of inclusive companies of Sofofa and Chile. For us, it's a huge honor to be able to present along with these other organizations and such uh, worldwide acknowledged efforts. But before, I would like to show you a very short video to give you more context about who we are. Brain, Network of Inclusive Companies. It is an association of companies around the labor inclusion of people with disabilities. It was uh, born in 2015 in alliance with Sofofa and the International Labor Organization, ILO. Now we have five members to create inclusive culture and team works. We invite you to be a member of the network of inclusive companies. For further information, visit rainchile.org. Perfect. We are now over 70 companies so far. Companies which work and understand inclusion as an adaptive talent with no single solution and not sustained in time either. The current context only makes the challenge even more complex. So we try to provide a response, a solution to the immediate needs because we represent a different figure to the ones existing in the ecosystem of inclusion today, which do not intend to set up a way of performing in inclusion, but we want to provide the space so that companies know about the different tools and tips and therefore building their own way of inclusion under the guidelines of the minimum baseline of inclusion. Our purpose is to promote the building of inclusive cultures within companies guided by three strategic principles to share the good practices because this uh, gave origin to this institution. We want to support and be supported by other companies and organizations, by other important stakeholders to collaborate with the public entities because those are the ones that are defining the minimum acceptable criteria of inclusion in companies and because we have found these needs we will be able to build better public policies our way of working is rather different to the one to the ones that different institutions and organizations have we focus in a work from a broader perspective of the challenge of inclusion understanding inclusion in labor from a person beyond just playing a role the, but involving other people, other other sectors and 
companies within RAIN work constantly to build this more inclusive social and work environments, promoting real opportunities. And the most complicated part, uh, the most complex challenge, uh, taking up the objectives and the challenges is, of course, following the good practices that are recommended and implementing those. So this work is about taking this to the practice in the company's realities, the labor contexts that are all different. The work, the network incentivates this, of course, where people and companies share their needs. And now we realize that there are similar barriers. So they can share what worked and what did not work. So in that line, we propose and apply different proposals that could be applied to different realities. This is the most common conversation discussion that we have in the network about understanding that there are challenges where the same action cannot be applied in to companies and the same action could even contribute to overcome different barriers. This diversity among the challenges is also acknowledged in the network and truly significant, which is why we believe it's important to design initiatives to provide proposals to the different actors of the network because just gathering around to work on only one topic is difficult. So we try to address this larger scope and then we conduct the initiatives and participate in these initiatives, but also we accompany companies that are just beginning in this work. And lastly, we take what we've learned, we apply it and adapt it within our realities. Companies in Lorraine are active agents of the labor inclusion ecosystem. And I would like to highlight that the 100% of activities and initiatives that we conduct in the network are 100% built by the, by the companies. These over 60 companies divide in different working groups and we work together in building uh, study programs, tools, indicators, uh, different projections and ambitions and for the long term. We share barriers, but also very important dreams. But in this format of work where companies are involved always puts in the center people with disabilities. This work in network uh, is about the challenges that people have met to face labor inclusion with some characteristics that have met segregation and important discrimination in our society. This is of course, important to highlight that our initiatives have a 90%, 95% of satisfaction because they're built within the same companies, but also we promote the work of, among companies and also try to link them with experts in each one of the matters, because it's clear that by their, on their own, companies are not able to do this. So as a network, we've been progressing and growing taking small steps but in the right direction we have achieved 1.4 percent of people with disabilities in payroll and the baseline in chile is one percent this is not as many people but we are going further we've understand uh we've understood after three years of this implementation that there's so much more this is normative and related to public policies too. The factors of success are of the network, the people and the working groups in companies that meet here found, find a space to grow together that they cannot find anywhere else, a space where they share their pains and visibilize as companies who share motivations and visions of a better future where all ideas are put on the table and validated and respected of course supported because companies are not in silos every project that each one of the companies in network have have other companies behind supporting them and showing them that it's possible at rain we find a space for companies so it's a space for people who want to transform society. How do we sustain in time? Well, this is one of the main characteristics, working as a network. And more specifically, we have an annual support of $600 from the companies going directly to the initiative's execution. This is a direct 
contribution which facilitates uh, the, the bureaucracy that's usually found in this. Of course, there are different agendas, but the we work on the same ba timeline. And the strategic alliances are, of course, hugely important. And with international articulation, coordination, this has been even more powerful. We need to consider this. We already have sustainability and the support and growth continues to progress, but when you think about the next steps, uh, several concepts emerge. Until last year, the concept of work and continuous learning had not been as important. There were companies and organizations which had it uh, enabled within, but and, and they were able to succeed easier, but uh, those who had never done it had to adapt and face several problems and very harsh moments. So as Drain, we went to broaden the concept of inclusion. And one of the steps to follow is the intersectionality of inclusion, where we mention other characteristics and we add them to what disability is. Uh, either men, women, these are people are parents or they come from uh, different, they have different ethnicities or belong to different, indigenous people. So we want to promote that from Brain, and we want to continue uh, fostering the work of companies around inclusion. And most important of, of all is to disseminate the work in the network because we believe in its transformative effect. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Carolina. And now we will hear Fernando Estrada from Mexico. Fernanda is the director of executive from the Entrele organization, and he's also the chairman of the Ibero-American Network of Inclusive Companies. As I said before, he is in charge of the Entrele initiative from Mexico. It's an initiative that wants to include people with disability and they work together with more than 600 companies from 45 NGOs, uh, five universities, uh, government organizations, and also commercial chambers. From the first year, they have included more than 9,000 people with disabilities in the work environment. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Fernando. Muchas gracias por la presentación, Ana, y pues thank quiero you very much for the introduction, Ana, and I want to thank all of the people from Zero Project for considering us and for uh, making us participate in this event. The truth is that it is very important for us to be able to share what we are doing and, um, well, being able to learn also from what the other networks are doing in other countries. I would also like to talk about Uruguay and Chile, and the truth is that, well, we want to, to make the best attempt possible to talk about you. More than 7.7 .7 million people in Mexico live with a disability. They have to... Uh, deal with uh, judgment and barriers every day that difficult the access to basic services, education and employment. So how do we achieve a country where everyone can have the same opportunities? Entrele is an initiative from the Mexican Council of Businesses that wants to close this gap and wants to help companies to strengthen their inclusion culture in a successful way. And that's not only give better and more uh, work opportunities for people with disabilities, but also opening doors and adding talent for their work teams. Let's add up efforts to transcend the barriers that we have in our society. The dream of a Mexico that it's more just including and more humane is only uh, possible if we build it together. Entrele. So five years ago, we started with Entrele as uh, an initiative for uh, the work and industry, for the companies not to have an excuse to implement inclusion of disabled people in their organization. We're having inclusion programs focused on gender and sexual diversity. It is very important to have that and it's very necessary for a country as uh, ours, but we're leaving uh, behind many people because of different conditions, uh, given the fact that there was not a lot of knowledge about what they were doing. So um, we were seeing it from a philanthropic point of view, instead of seeing people uh, from their capacities, from their rights, 
And that is why we created Entralet to generate all of the necessary tools so that the companies can implement this inclusion programs in a more inclusive way and in a more practical way as well. We want for all of the company, companies to be 100% inclusive, and uh, we need to focus on three areas mainly. The hiring of people with disabilities and everything that this involves, so a uh, change in culture of uh, in inclusive policies, training uh, to all of the collaborators so that everybody can have these new opportunities in the organization creation of services and products that are accessible and that are inclusive. Not only we want to do it uh, from the inside, but we want to do it inside out. We want to uh, ensure that all of our products, that all of our teams, that all of our branches are accessible for people with, uh, uh, with disabilities and that we have customer service distant for that. We also want to foster the inclusion in the value change. This can only only limit it to companies. This has to be permeated into other companies to be able to achieve this inclusion and this dream of a more inclusive Mexico. So how do we do it? In Entrele, we have a comprehensive model that starts with a diagnosis, which is the index of inclusion for people with disabilities. And here we can understand where the company is at and start talking about the plans for the future. So setting objectives for the future. And on this, start talking about um, goals that are very specific in uh, very determined, well-determined uh, timelines so that we can uh, see the evolution of each one of the countries, of the companies. So we can measure year after years how the companies are moving along and how they are being able to achieve the different goals. Apart from the work plan, we have the training, the educational part. There are tools that are going to help the companies to keep on being strengthened and to keep on knowing what they're doing. We're talking about companies that have more than 40,000 uh, employers, employees. So we need to have a digital training program that can uh, that can be done by uh, all the people. And also to close the gap, we have a, a job offer only for people with disabilities. This has more than 19,000 candidates and that is going to allow us to position the people with disabilities in the position that they're interested on, the, the job that they wanna do. Because if we are only close to segregating people um, to specific job posts, job positions that are, are just for them, we are not going to create inclusion. We need to raise awareness so that companies advertise all of their work positions for everybody. So, and they need to be ready to receive people with disabilities. They should not be creating specific uh, job positions for them. In the index of people with disability, with disabilities, we had 100, 108 participant companies out of which 51 were recognized with the Entrele uh, hallmark. This is a um, hallmark that shows the companies that are committed with all of this. The ones that uh, were very well uh, in performance, they have this as an incentive for them to keep on preparing and also incentivating other companies. We give this award in, to all of the, comp to the companies that have the best practices every year. Este, este es el distintivo, este es el sello que se le otorga a las empresas. Y está enfocado... This is the, the, the hallmark that we give to the companies. So what we want here is that they see that not just for having had 10 in a questionnaire, you are inclusive. This is an evolutionary process that we need to keep on advancing on. The inclusive process is changing. It's a changing process. And if it's not 100% inclusive, then we need to keep on working on that. And we're also working on uh, training to people with disabilities to strengthen the services that are given to the companies and for them to be able to have more options for training. And also the people with disabilities so that those uh, people that have a need for employment, for need to, to be trained, they don't have enough skills to go on an interview, for example, they can acquire that and they can um, apply for a better job. 
reportado ya a más de 9,400 personas con discapacidad. We had hired 9,431 9, people at the end of 2020, and up to now we have more than 19,000 19, users uh, logged in, uh, registered in our platform. Our, uh, our companies are, 17, uh, are from 17 chambers and associations and 506 groups um, in an entrepreneurial way and 825 at a national level. A final de cuentas, el México de un sueño más justo, más humano, más incluyente. We want to have a, a better Mexico, but this is only going to be achieved uh, if we work together. That is why we want to work with you to be able to really have an Iber America that is more unified, that is more inclusive, and that it gives opportunities for everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Fernando, for that presentation. Now, Maria Jose Cabezudo will have the floor, president of the Jaraki Foundation de Paraguay. She has a degree in education in National University of Asuncion in Paraguay. She has a master's in entrepreneurship and innovation from the University of Salamanca in Spain and also labor inclusion in Colombia. Maria Jose will present on the Paraguayan work of the network. Thank you so much, Jose. Good morning. Thank you very much, Anna, for the presentation. And I want to start by uh, presenting my mentor, the person that has inspired me the most and the person that has taught me the most valuable things in my life. This is Carlos Armando, my oldest brother. I grew up with him. I learned with him and I transformed myself. And I started fighting for the rights of people with disabilities because of him. This took me to creating the Saraki Foundation as a response to the situation of people with disabilities so that, that, so that they can keep on acquiring uh, uh, skills after school. But with time, we saw that we were not achieving real inclusions. They were really isolated and they were far from feeling really included in society. So we started to analyze this reality and we started seeing this from other, from another perspective. We started taking into consideration the environment as well. So work inclusion was a, a way to include people with disabilities in which not only them, they would boost themselves and they would strengthen themselves, improving their lives and their families, but also there were change agents in the business area we were able to find a big potential of improvement in this process of transformation. But the challenges that we saw were bigger and bigger. And in this shift of paradigm, we saw three main problems to be solved. First of all, the lack of knowledge from the companies. They were not wanting to generate new opportunities because they did not know what benefits they could have in things related to um, work environment and some other things. Most of the companies that were wanting to take a step towards inclusion did not know what they actually had to do. And they did not know if what they were doing was correct or not. They needed to know that the effort that they were making was the correct one. And finally, currently, investment in Paraguay in inclusion is not retributed. Companies do not have a platform that allows for a return of investment in reputation or in the economic aspect. From 2013, we have a law of uh, tax incentives, but we do not have institutional steps that are well defined to uh, so that we have this process is limited to internal steps. So that is how we understood that to generate a deep change and a deep commitment we needed to generate something that would allow companies to get to know criteria of a work inclusion that was real and of quality in this path in this journey we started working with uh, the 
Red Paraguaya de entregas de empresas amigas de la inclusión. This is to include people with disabilities and to improve in accessibility. Through the network, we started creating a platform of work that was collaborative with companies in which they have the possibility of working and understanding that inclusion covers a lot more than just hiring people with disabilities in the workplace and that this actually has a change it has um, an impact on internal climate productivity accessibility human resources management amongst others with time we started uh, wondering how could we keep on working on this? And we wanted to have a strategy that was agile, practical, and that could give the right parameters to know how to make a company inclusive and to orient ourselves in the inclusion of improvement. So in this sense, we also provided an incentive to the effort that was made, and that is how we got the hallmark Empresa E. This is a system of evaluation of 37 indicators in five categories that offers a roadmap uh, to improve creativity, productivity, organizational climate, and capacity of innovation in the companies from the inclusion of their collaborators, suppliers, and markets as well. Why Empresa E? E for inclusion and for impulse, for impact, for innovation, for imagination. So how does this uh, hallmark work? Initially, the, the companies that want to have this hallmark need to be part of the SUMA network and they need to participate in at least one um, training of inclusive policies they are going to get the hallmark amiga of inclusion so uh, friends of inclusion this is a first step into inclusion for a company after they get the first hallmark they will have access to a self-diagnosis tool for management of inclusion and accessibility which is available in the web page of the Seraki uh, page and suma the process is going to be done online and it is absolutely free so the companies uh, need to give their all of their information and start the session login when they fill in all of the fields they need to go to categories and in there they will have the different dimensions to assess each one of them will have a system of evaluation a source of verification um place to put the repertory documents and also a chart to write additional comments to access to the hallmarks the most important one or the most special ones they need to see a, a distribution of five categories and they need to fill the items with the different uh, plans and elaborate also an action plan after that each company is going to be able to visualize their progress and their percentage of achievement in each one of the categories through a summary of general progress so this will allow to have a measure of reference and know where they're at in inclusion they will also be able to request a verification process for technical aspects and analysis of best practices through a um, team that is specialized and that will determine the compliance of all of the indicators. The companies will have to have a minimum of an 80% of qualification to get the progressive hallmark in each one of the categories that were achieved. The progressive hallmark is going to be made up of five categories or dimensions that are going to be assessed independently one from another. The human um, management category is related to policies, processes, and procedures that have to be boosted by the organizations so that they can manage adequately the human capital, considering people with disabilities. The category chain of value is related to the policies, the processes, the procedures, inclusive, the inclusive procedures that are related to the suppliers. The community hallmark is related to the initiatives that are generated by the organizations in favor of the inclusive environments. And also physical accessibility is related to the conditions for physical accessibility of the institution. And 
also the category of communication is related to accessibility of um, materials and different things. Once they get the certification, the companies will have the hallmark excellence, inclusive excellence. So this shows that they achieve the maximum level. As you can see, each hallmark has a different design, which can be used in different communications, communication means of the company. So this is going to be shown integrally, and this is going to boost the standards as, for example, uh, exclusive man inclusive management, and this is going to have an impact on their reputation and their image as well, and also providing better uh, opportunities for the people that are not being considered now. So the uh, Empresas Amigas de la Inclusión through the hallmark that I am showing you allows the companies to be empowered in a broad range of aspects through a roadmap that is going to tell them uh, how what to do is going to set the pace. And I want to go back to the beginning. Do you remember that I told you that thanks to Carlos Armando, my brother, I started working for the rights of people with disabilities? Well, now I have Juanqui. Juanqui strengthens our efforts through this, we want to build a new story, a new world filled with opportunities for him and for other people with disabilities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria Jose, for that presentation. And finally, we'll give the floor to Jorge Mesa, the inclusion official for disability of the ILO uh, in Geneva. He's a part of the Secretary of the Global Network of People with Disabilities of the ILO, a global platform of 30 multinationals committed to the inclusion of people with disabilities, supporting associations and trade unions in the design and implementation of policies and inclusion practices around disability all over the world. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Anna. And um, I have the privilege to present a little bit about the Global Business and Disability Network that we manage here from the ILO headquarters. Um, the unique selling proposition of the ILO Global Business and Disability Network is that it's a really unique network um, led by the ILO, the United Nations Agency for Labor Issues. And we share we at the ILO, of course, but also the multinational corporations that are part of the network and the associates members, we all share the commitment that we want to be benefit businesses, persons with disabilities themselves, as well as the economies and communities uh, we work in across the globe. Uh, we do that at global level, first and foremost, enabling multinational corporations to do a good disability inclusion job wherever they operate. And at country level, um, the ILO Global Business and Disability Network works with the national business and disability networks, and there are about 30 around the world. And of course, we already heard from Maria Jose about the work in Paraguay. Uh, and just to, once again, to say that we have uh, three different categories of members in the networks. Currently, we have 30 multinational enterprises on board. On the right-hand side, uh, um, of the slide for those who can see. There are the logos of the 30 multinational companies from Accenture to Atos to Carrefour to L'Oreal, Capgemini, um, MSC Repsol, Novartis, just to name a few. And then 32 national networks and of course also the regional network in Latin America, the Red Iberoamericana de Empresas Inclusivas. In addition to the multinational enterprises and the national networks, we have nine supporting non-business organizations as members in the Global Business and Disability Network, of which also the, um, the International Disability Alliance is part. So what is actually in, uh, in it in the Global Business and Disability Network for its members? So we usually say, look, there are four concrete benefits. You can learn from others and share with other global leaders on disability inclusion in business. You have access to country-specific business and disability insights. 
And that's also through the National Business and Disability Networks. Um, a third point is that we generate cutting edge knowledge on disability inclusion in business. And of course, for members, you also have a way to showcase your good disability inclusion work uh, worldwide. I'll say a bit more about these four uh, benefits in the, in the following slides. So what do we mean by learning from each other and sharing global leaders? Obviously, uh, when face-to-face -face meetings were still kind of the default, we would have uh, global conferences usually hosted here in, in Switzerland where we have the ILO headquarters, uh, but we also had conferences at, at regional level, for example, in Southern Africa, Latin America, North America, and well, now we'll also have a virtual conference for the Asia and the Pacific in November. Um, ever since the pandemic hit the world, we have moved very much to webinars and uh, here a list of the recent webinars and also just to show you what kind of topics the Global Business and Disability Network tries to address. So here, leave no one offline engaging companies on digital accessibility, which is still uh, for many companies quite a challenge. Uh, we address topics like um, uh, disability bias in AI sponsored recruitment and neurodiversity in the workplace was also one of the webinars we had in recent months. And we continue, of course, to, to have these webinars on different topics. Um, some, some might be seen as um, avant-garde topics, but uh, you see that companies are different stages of disability inclusion, and we are trying to address those different stages of disability inclusion in companies through also our webinars. We recently introduced uh, here the last point on, on the current slide, the B2B roundtables. And these are only for company members of the ILO Global Business and Disability Network, because we feel that it is important to create a safe environment for companies to discuss also challenges, right? Sometimes a company might not be willing to share that more publicly. Um, so we provide a safe space where company members of the Global Business and Disability Network come together and share the experiences on different issues, like their measure, like for example, how they measure progress on disability inclusion in their companies, or how to provide reasonable accommodations, how to promote accessibility, and the B2B round tables um, seem to be a good space for that because, as I said, it's a safe space. When it comes to the second point of the benefits members have when when being part of our of our network, um, they gain specific access to to information and context in, in in countries and that we do obviously through regional conferences but also with the uh, with the um, establishment of national networks or the support to the establishment of national business and disability networks like we did in india in 2019 the philippines uh, in january 2020 or also the uh, the latest one in kenya on our website businessanddisability.org, you will find also country profiles. So for a company that is interested in, in a legal framework or quota requirements in a particular country, they can just go on our website and, and check it out. They will also find contacts, um, including international NGOs that might be of help for companies to promote disability inclusion. Um, about generating cutting edge knowledge. This is usually either uh, tools or also publications that summarize the latest discussion on a particular topic. The latest one we published in February this year was Inclusive Digital Economy for People with Disabilities. It's based on a publication we did also with Fundacion Once uh, and DHUB uh, in 2019 was making the future of work inclusive of people with disabilities. So with this year's publication, we zoomed into one of the mega trends of the future of work, the digital economy, the digitalization of the economy. Uh, back in 2017, we also published the principles and guidelines for national business and disability networks, which seem to be very appreciated by those um, who are trying to establish such networks in countries around the world. We also work on mental health. We have a report also available there. And um, what is also appreciated by companies is a model company self-assessment tool, which you can fill in online um, on the website to see where you stand as company on disability inclusion practices and policies. 
just then on uh, how how we uh, help companies to showcase their their uh, practices. We have, of course, uh, the the webinars, uh, the meetings, but we also host these um, present these practices on the website businessandisability.org. We have a bi-monthly newsletter in English and Spanish. By the way, our website is also available in Spanish, and we have a LinkedIn page with now about. 6,200 followers or so. Then just one last point, and this is one of the key areas we work on this year, is the Digital In Demand initiative, uh, where we focus this time first in Asia. And the whole idea is to get more people with disabilities into jobs of the digital economy. And what we see is needed oftentimes is that people with disabilities then need to acquire the digital skills that are demand that are in demand by local uh, employers. So there we try to promote the collaboration between businesses and those who provide digital skills training. So currently there's a scoping exercise ongoing in uh, Bangladesh, China, in the India, Indonesia and the Philippines, because there we count with the presence of national business disability networks, which can which can have a crucial role in uh, bringing businesses and training providers on digital uh, jobs together. The results and recommendations or the preliminary results rather will be presented at the regional conference for Asia on the 23rd and 24th of November 2021. I re really hope you can join also that conference. And then we hope that in, in 2020, so next year, we can pilot some of these digital in demand uh, projects in Asia. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias por, por su presentación. Thanks for your presentation, Jürgen. And now I would like to invite everyone to listen to this discussion in the panel with questions that we've received. The first question goes to Fernando Carota. Fernando, how to reach those small and medium enterprises that usually have less access to this national platforms of inclusive companies however they comprise the larger part of the business world in this ibero-american country so what projects can we set up thank you anna for your question uh, this clearly describes uh, a cross-cutting reality that uruguay is not exempt of uh, uruguay has 195,000 small and medium enterprises which is 67 percent of the labor market in uruguay very significant piece of data. So when we started with the design of inclusive companies, we think not only of the companies that we showed that could be a part of the network and that already have covered a part of the path and in some cases are multinationals and belong to other networks around the world, the Ibero-American network or the worldwide network, but those who are facing today the need of beginning with this process of organizational transformation, including people with disabilities in their payroll and complying with the law that is enforced in Uruguay regarding the inclusion of people with disabilities in the private sector, but sometimes lack the necessary elements in infrastructure, personnel, or the economic resources. So that is why from the network of, of companies, when we designed that plan, we aim to reach those companies, those small and medium enterprises, in what way? Through activities which are entirely free of charge and that we are already conducting throughout the life cycle, which began in the last month of May a cycle of webinars called uh, Overcoming Barriers, which the president of the REA inaugurated, Sir Fernando Estrada, open activities. And also in matters of training, of course, we have activities of training open to companies uh, overall, uh, even though they're not part of the network and the development of inclusive, inclusive practices, something that we've set up and uh, binding companies who which belong and do not belong to the network where we share practical cases and we try to help them solve problems that are emerging in the process of inclusion. And also we are sharing best practices in multinational and national companies that have already covered this uh, part of the story. And this will, of course, spill to all of the small and medium companies and it involves setting up two initiatives that we intend to start this year. One that we presented in my presentation, which is the Expo of Inclusion, which has an open training 
segment for all of the people in this ecosystem that will be held in December and of course setting up the inclusion pact an ambitious program of uh, business development that intends to accompany all of the organizations from their starting point from that baseline and everything related to their process of cultural transformation to become in, in, along the way in an inclusive company. So this is um, a matter of great concern for our network, something that we are uh, putting all of our efforts and focus and because of the geographical constraints, this is difficult to think that our country seems small, but this 19 units uh, sometimes are very distance from the physical point of view, but we are also working in other projects that will probably uh, start working on with uh, public campaigns that which involve companies uh, in, around inclusion and people with disabilities so as to not leave anyone behind and not small and medium enterprises that mean so much for this country and for the employment world. Thank you so much, Fernando. Now we continue with Carolina. I wanted to ask you, how have people with disabilities have been involved in the development of the network and how do you believe the relationship between the civil society and the business world could be improved? This is very clear and almost obvious for many organizations that have been working in matters of inclusion for many years, but, but there's no inclusion without us. That is the motto of people with disabilities. Of course, it is impossible for them to imagine an inclusive world when they are not facing the same uh, barriers as them. So when we work with companies, we'll link to our workers with disabilities and communities of people with disabilities so that in the same way that companies bond with their own workers, where the analysis of the job position is not only related to the area and the cubicle where the people develop their functions, but uh, since the, the application and whatever putting up a job offer implies till the firing of someone that point where you, you let people go and as we mentioned in the presentation my other colleagues did too this does not only involve labor but how the work environment relates to the family and social environments and of course other types of environments that we as people uh, part of a society link to uh, relate to and that it is why it's important to consider this from the normative perspective. We in Chile are studying the implementation of a law which will begin uh, in force November next year. Um, all of all the companies that must have a someone expert in inclusion, we're trying to define what would be the labor competences that that person should have in all of the organizations in order to promote the correct development of inclusion within organizations. This is key and it means a tremendous step for our society, very huge. But this is being demanded because it goes beyond the law and only demanding a quota, but uh, being responsible and accountable of a well-implemented process and that that inclusion expert continues to nurture in other spaces because solutions and actions are not specific and are and are not static. Everything changes, societies uh, uh, change as well. And the decisions that we made prior to the pandemic are differ from the wires that we're making now. We need to reinvent ourselves. That is how much it means to for us to have an expert in inclusion in the business world and uh, in, among the employers both private and public so important to have an expert that belongs to the organization thank you so much carolina now we continue with fernando estrada fernando you've mentioned that as the president of the ibero-american network of inclusive companies um well, could you please tell us in further detail what are the projects where you're working on and what are, where are going to be the next steps for this network? Thank you so much, Anna. The Ibero-American Network seeks to um, try to unify inclusion in Latin America, try to set the path, the guidelines, so that everyone works together jointly with the same metrics, learning together, because I believe that learning from each other is indeed is valuable, valuable and important. We are working around three main pillars. One of those is focused on training and education. The other one around policies and 
standardization and well training and education to learn from each other actually next week fernando will be joining us and sharing from uruguay about their accomplishments that they've had uh, with the launch the recent launch and movimento will be joining us what they're doing to train other organizations and more but what we truly want is to learn together to continue strengthening and on the side of policies and standardization we truly want to understand what is happening in every country every country leaves inclusion differently now carolina was telling us about this the bill to have uh, an expert in inclusion in every company we should be promoting that in every country that will be the key so that this is fulfilled so that we can move faster this committee what it does to understand what is happening in every country in order to help us work together raise our voices and demand the same things and lastly communication the third pillar we need to unite every country we need the networks of countries be a part of this this cannot be something that is something hap so only happening in a few places we must close our gaps and work together what we're aiming for in the network is in that line learning from each other and uniting ibero america in this fight for the rights of people with disabilities Thank you so much, Fernando. Next question is for Maria Jose. Maria Jose, I would like to ask you to please tell us in further detail what have been the main obstacles, the main barriers that you found in Uruguay to set up the network of inclusive companies. Well, this is a very broad question, but if we go to the origins of this creation of this network, it was a small challenge it was uh, companies were not prepared to assume this commitment when we gave them the first proposal. It did not uh, meet an end. Uh, companies didn't feel sure about sharing their own experiences and learnings that they had with inclusion. So we saw the need of reinforcing bilateral relations and working closer to companies and when they started to feel more confident they started to realize that this process was not as complex as it seemed and it was very positive for companies so they started to feel an overall confidence in sharing with other companies and creating and forming a part of this network with an objective of knowing the different practices and seeing different ways of conducting this process and learning from one another Now, the last question goes for Jürgen with the International Labor Organization. Jürgen, the ILO has been working in recent times about the future of employment, the future of labor for people with disabilities too. And now I would like to know if you could give us, uh, talk to us a little on how do you believe that the national network of inclusive companies could contribute in improving the future of labor for people with disabilities? How can we participate? Thank you very much. Look, obviously, the, the concept of the future of work is a very broad one, and national business and disability networks have a potential role to play. Um, I'm, I'm specifically thinking about being attentive of what is being discussed in, in the respective countries and the respective uh, national setting on the future of work. So national business and disability networks understood as the single voice of business on disability issues should of course take an active role in these discussions but these discussions of course um can be broken down into into smaller discussion because future work is so broad and and obviously it keeps moving but when we think about the mega trends of the future of work like the digitalization of the economy which has been accelerated by the covid 19 pandemic but also of course climate change demographic change um just to name three key mega trends in the future of work 
wherever national business and disability networks see that these discussion discussions are are taking place they need to think about okay how is this relevant for business and how can we include the perspective of people with disabilities in that discussion so this is the general um, um, involvement of national business and disability network in these discussions in a way um, uh, mainstreaming disability in these mainstream discussions but at the same time and i gave the example at the end of my presentation there are concrete more concrete actions one can take like we're trying to do with a digital in demand initiative where national business and disability networks can be conveners of uh, what we call a business compact so with companies that have an interest in hiring people with disabilities who have the necessary digital skills and coming together with training providers so very concrete actions to make sure that people with disabilities have the fair share of comp of sorry of fair share of jobs that are being created in these rather emerging sectors or these industry sectors that are gaining more and more importance like digital uh, digital jobs but also what we in the ILO call green jobs right where you have to see look this is a, uh, this these are skill sets that are already in demand and the demand will only uh, increase so we need to be aware of um, the future trends the trends that lead to more employment for people in general and then making sure that you take concrete action bring the necessary stakeholders together for example in green job we see look um, what is necessary to bring people with disabilities into green jobs jobs that preserve and restore our natural environment um, this can be done through targeted initiatives uh, that you say look we, we specifically train people with disabilities on on specific skills that are needed in green jobs or digital, digital jobs or any other jobs that are uh, increasingly in demand or you say look what is happening in the mainstream uh, for people to get jobs in these sectors and how are they not yet uh, inclusive uh, and accessible to people with disabilities and what is needed to do that right and and as i said bringing uh, bringing businesses together with with training providers, also with other government institutions, with organizations of persons with disabilities, of course, to create this, this single voice to, um, to get more people with disabilities into jobs that are increasing in the future of work. Thank you. Thank you so much for everyone presenting to all of the speakers and for answering the questions in the panel and for joining us in this session hopefully was interesting for all of you as interesting as i thought it did it was very enriching in my opinion so thank you so much and we'll continue with the conference of zero project